Hello and welcome to Aulendorf in Baden-Württemberg, southern Germany. This is the showroom of Cartago. This is the chic S Plus integrated 50. Not quite top of the range for Cartago, but still an exceptionally attractive vehicle. There's the price, 140,600. And it costs 700, sorry, it doesn't, that's it. In length, it's 791 by 227, 312 and a half centimeters high. But what about payload? Well, ready to go, 4,000, empty, there you go, so 3,790, no one in it. So they have allowed 215 for a bit of petrol, a bit of water, and two uh, people. So when I say petrol, that's a generic term, meaning diesel, and that's something shows that uh, I picked that word up in the 1970s. And uh, it can go to 6,700. Um, kilo basis but okay normally 5,600 I suppose at that level it doesn't make much difference what what, what you put it on um, huge amount of payload at least uh, one and a half tons there at least and um, with not including the people Iveco daily 50 C let's have a look inside first thing of note huge double floor right well normally you wouldn't have steps here because you've got a step that comes out down there and walk inside. So I'll take you to the back and then we'll start the video off from the back if you like. We'll start the commentary off from the back. Okay, one thing that they brought out this year was uh, this uh, television thing up here. This year being 2020. There you go, there's a, there's a television up there. Should you want to watch the television in bed. And uh, show you inside. Locker. Bit of a ledge in there. Now, uh, they seem to have some difficulties as to what to do with the corner bits. And I'm gonna come over here now. This, of course, is a, it is a bit awkward how to actually use these corner bits. And you can sort of put your sort of bits in there, I suppose. If I open this one up and open this up at the same time, you'll see that they touch each other. I'm not gonna do it to the very end, but uh, there you go. So. Now, my way of thinking is to push the corner bit to the, the very, um, I put, push the storage to the very end as far as you can. Uh, although it's not always possible with um, the shape of the storage compartment doors. Anyway, a few ideas there. You've got a USB thing there so you can charge your phone at night and then put it in that corner thing up there. Lights under the bed pretty good now steps up to the bed obviously in a van costing or line it if you like costing this much money you would expect uh, an uh, easy entrance to the the bed uh, but um, this is a very easy entrance what if you want to make the bed big well you just pull this thing out like that and you've got a cushion and you put the cushion in there. Where's the cushion? Well, it's gonna be either on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Let's have a look on the right-hand side first. Well, it's not in there, but that gives you an idea of the depth of the wardrobe. Of course, you can open the wardrobe from down here, but you can't do it when this is in this position. Yeah, I'll show you this one as well. This one is uh, where the cushion is. Of course, I would keep the cushion on the uh, on the bed myself if I was having it used. And in both cases, you can open this from down here. Of course, you will have to push this thing back first, and then you can open these things from here. If you push the thing back far enough, that is. There you go. Is your entrance there right now this type of 
plan has what I would term a sort of a dressing area, if you like. Now let's close this toilet down here. So that sort of, it's not locked yet, you see, but you can lock it by turning this thing around like that. Now, what if you want to use the toilet? Well, that, that's locked for those people up front. They can't sort of get in and uh, spoil it for you. But um, what about people in here? That's why we've got a thing that comes across like that. Oh, and then it sort of extends by another one as well. I don't know if this is coming up very well. There you go, there's two. I'm very proud of my new wide angle uh, telephone. But as you can see, it doesn't always uh, work. It's not, it's not wide enough for always. Right, so you've got that. Okay, so if you want to get like, dressed, yeah, I'll close this again here. Have another look at this. And the second one coming across. Then you want to sort of put your clothes on so you can come in here, keep your clothes in there, and there's the place of your clothes. For two people in the van, that's pretty good. What if, what if, the, if you were downsizing to this van? Well, maybe you wouldn't need all the clothes, would you? But the thing about having a lot of clothes is this. The more clothes you've got, the less time you have to spend washing them. And uh, that's something I think a lot of people who buy camper vans don't seem to appreciate. Okay, so you can, oh, you can, oops, this thing here comes out like that. And you've got this rather curious door on the toilet. Yeah, it's sort of closed by the magnet up there. I say sort of closed. I suppose if you need nipping quickly, that would do. Well, I'll show how it works on the inside. How many other YouTube channels give you a demonstration of how to use a toilet? I think that comes across there like that. If you really want to. There's the toilet. Yeah, I'll show you the toilet. I don't think I've ever done this. No, I have done it before, but not often. It's got a camper van plug. I'd rather have a domestic one. There's me in the mirror. And there's a lot of room for storing things. And here too. But not behind this one. sticking up at the back. Bit of storage down here. Sometimes it's good to have access to your water tank from inside. You never know when you might need it. You can see what's going on in the double floor from down here. From up here. Okay, I'm not down there. It's in here. Oh, I can't get myself out. What's happened? Right, seeing as I'm in the mood for showing what's in the double floor, we'll have a look down here. Useful? Possibly. Not as useful as you access your fresh water tank. I've never actually had to access my black water tank. Or grey water tank, I should say. And I've got this one here, which is the largest. Although. Well, not including those accessible from outside. There, you can dump your water off there. Something as used to be able to dump your water off. If you're going to put the van away, winter, then you should use that. One thing I do strongly recommend, however, is to heat the van during the winter. I mean, you don't have to keep it on very high, 
but just enough to stop uh, getting damp inside. So, I, now Alexei, the person I work with, uh, well, who built the bank, see him in my camper van videos, uh, doesn't talk, uh, well, doesn't know English, so he doesn't actually speak here. Uh, but um, he, uh, he thinks the temperature should be 16 degrees. I think that's a bit of an exaggeration myself, but uh, I would certainly say um, it should be at least um, six. Obviously, you don't want to keep water in the in in the um, the tank when it's at risk of frost. Now, if it never really gets particularly cold, then you don't have to bother. Now, when I was living in Sicily, the coldest it got to was one night it got dropped them to two degrees, and everybody was talking about it. I suppose they still are talking about it. Well, this shows you a. Uh, how much room you've got down here now uh, opinions vary as to uh, whether or not you want to have a glass holder uh, it looks good with the uh, lights on it takes up a lot of space uh, glasses do tend to take up a lot of space if you don't have something like this there's two other systems i'm going to tell you about one's from a company called sylvie in uh, southern germany in bavaria and uh, in that case they've got magnets on the bottom you can see a film did that and the magnet attaches to a magnetic strip like that that would uh, that's one way of doing it. there's another system by a company called door which is based near uh, heilbronn in baden-württemberg and they have a system which actually holds the glasses in place via it's a bit like using velcro actually but it's uh, they were a company making uh, car seats and they started doing that so anyway, there's two ways there of uh, keeping your um, glasses from breaking. And we've all had broken glasses. Yeah, I'm wondering how to get into this here. On the cab storage. On Right, you see this thing here is on the Aveco, as we said earlier. Automatic gearbox. One unusual feature is putting the barometer, the clock, and the temperature up here, um, and the uh, what do you call it when you measure humidity. And here, hey, this is a bit of a worry here. Look at that stormy it says there. We've got a lovely sunny day outside. All right, 32 inch television there. But I must show you one thing here, look at that. Flat, 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 until you get the step down there. I'd rather do without that step down there as well, if it were my decision, but uh, it wasn't it's still a very nice fan. Now, what about standing up under this? Well, I'm gonna try and demonstrate. I have to put my foot down here though. All right, there you can see. Okay, I am touching the uh, the bed, but what about when I stand up? Does it make any difference? I did do a video. I don't know if it was published or not, but I did a video where I actually jumped up and hit myself. It might be one of the ones I lost. So you can see, I just about make out in the mirror. I can stand up, but if so, you have got enough clearance from under this uh, bed. And the reason I don't like beds, well, there's two reasons, they take storage away, but more importantly, they impinge on headroom. But in this case, I can just about manage with it. All right, I'll show you a couple of other liners. No, I'll show you on the upside, then I'll show you a couple more liners. If you want to know more information on this van, there is more information on my site, motorhomefulltime.com. You'll have to put in Carthago S Plus into the, uh, into the search engine. Huge garage, although bear in mind, uh, there's the electrics there, bear in mind it's got, what I said, over one and a half tons of payload, well over, but you can't put it all in the garage. I think the garage you can put 450 kilos in and uh, don't try putting in any more.
Okay, and look how big this storage is. You can see straight through. There's your um, water pump. Oh, and there you can see into the into the lounge. Yeah, I'll show you in this one here as well, because this is, this is quite flash. This is the S Plus Integrate 61 XLLE, 160,000. It's 860 long, 227 wide, 329 in height. And this is even more luxurious. Comes at a more luxurious price as well. Much bigger dressing room. Pretty nice, huh? If you want sort of the that's next one up and sort of the one of the next ones down is this one here e line integrated 5.1 qb 125,000, and it is eight just under eight meters in length all these ones are 227 in width if you want something narrower and they do do vans which are narrower but you need to uh, they've got uh, look uh, sort of much, much less luxurious and they come of course at a much less luxurious price they've got vans 212 centimeters in width Here's one liner for two. Well, it's a different sort of thing, this double a tandem axle at the back. Completely different style of vehicle. This costs 143,000 and is 853 centimeters in length. Beds there, it says it says for two chairs down in that position and it's got this enormous lounge in the back oh pretty nice e-line integrated 6.2 xlqb now um, i've got to do this for somebody in more detail 113 and a half thousand, 865 centimeters. So I'm doing this in more detail for somebody. Somebody else also asked me to sort of get under them and sort of film the undersides. I don't mind filming the undersides, but that is really not so much a question to Cartago, but more to um, Alco. Integrated 5.9 XLLE at a price of 123,000 and is 840 centimeters in length. So, I've tried there to give you their, um, the top of the range models there to give you a bit of comparison. 
and I uh, hope you find that of interest and if you do you might want to subscribe so coming back to the one I started off with thanks very much for watching and uh, stay watching